Hi, I'm Kim. I'm Brad. We're 626 Ohana, California, and today we're going to be reviewing and give you tips and tricks on SeaWorld San Diego. So yeah, we haven't been there in over 10 years, so some things have changed. Yeah, I would say definitely. <laughs> and some have stayed the same. So we'll let you know all the mistakes we made and tips and tricks to help you for your day at SeaWorld San Diego. Okay, so we got our tickets on a Black Friday sale. It was kind of like a bundle package. So with ours, we got the all day dining and the quick queue unlimited. Yeah. And the thing to know is there's always kind of seems discounts on prices for SeaWorld. Absolutely. I would definitely check back them more so than a lot of other theme parks. So let's go ahead and talk about the prices. So right now, a normal general day ticket where you reserve your date is $99 and 99 cents all the way up to 144.98 with dining, but there's a sale like right now going on for $64.99 for just the day ticket. Yep, so keep checking back. And also if you're military, there are special deals for you. And also for teachers, there's a couple days that you can go to SeaWorld for free. Okay, so let's go to our next thing and we talked about dining. Well, what, what are we talking about dining? So it's called all day dining. It's like a dining package if you thought about like Disneyland. So it's $144.99 and you can get a meal every 60 minutes. Wow, that's a lot of food. Um, <laughs> anyway, so for, with that, you get a drink and either an appetizer, dessert, and an entree. Yeah. So you have several restaurants to choose from and it kind of gives you a little bit of variety. And we'll get a little bit more into that here in a little bit. And there's also other packages you can add on if you'd like to. So the Quick Q Unlimited is usually about $14.99 per day, but it only includes four rides right now, which is the Electric Eel, Manta, Shipwreck Rapids, and Journey to Atlantis. Mm -hmm. And then of course, there's the reserve seating for all the animal presentations, which I'd almost call them just shows. Nice. I think they like to use... Presentations. <laughs> I think they're trying to, they do throw in a lot of education and things about the animals. So I think they're just trying to be different verbiage, I think. <laughs> yeah, but you know where the orcas are going. That, okay. th those shows. <laughs> All right. For the reserve seating, it's $14.99 per person per day. But that's for all the shows. And right now, the animal presentations include Sea Lions Live, Dolphin Days, and Orca Encounter. And guess what? There's even more stuff to add on here. Okay, so there's a quick premiere, front of the line, queue, and sh basically the animal presentations for $19.99. I kind of like that because if you're going to do one, it's cheaper, and you kind of bundle them together. We'll get into our reasons for that upcoming. But wait, there's more! Are we really? <laughs> <laughs> I could see like the Sham Wow guy or somebody, right? <laughs> Um, the quick premiere in Single Express to Emperor is going to be $24.99. March 12th, the new roller coaster Emperor is opening. So that may be because I'm sure they'll have some long lines when it opens. I don't know. I kind of wrestle with that one because of the fact that it's like five bucks for one ride. Yeah, so I, I don't know. We'll have to see. And then also, if you're wondering about parking, parking rates do vary from $30 to $45. We did not put, uh, park because we were camping across the bay. <laughs> and so we took a Uber and Lyft, and there is a special area for Uber and Lyft pickups and drop-offs that's a little bit far out, so you might have to walk a little bit. But it wasn't too bad. So the first thing we did is we went over to Manta thinking it was going to be a really long line. We were really excited. We get over there and realized that you can't take your backpack on the ride, which is no surprise. But then... <laughs> mm -hmm. And that was our kind of first mistake, I guess, as we put it. Yes. Is unfortunately you have to pay for a locker just to be on that ride because you can't take any cameras. You can't take anything with you. You basically have to put it all in a locker. So if you have a backpack and we take a backpack everywhere we go for parks. We do. You can't take it. So we had to pay for 10 minutes of locker rental. and Because yeah. we had uh, the quick queue unlimited. So when we went on Mana, we had to, it depends on the size of the locker, how much it is. Um, it's kind of, we were thrown off and kind of disappointed because we're used to Universal Studios where the locker's included and they don't charge you, but it's only for a limited time. Mm -hmm. But it always gave you plenty of time. And then they have the all day, depending on what size locker you want, which is 12 to $17 per day. 
The problem with that is only ends up by guest services. So if you're at the other end of the park, if you're a journey to Atlantis, like it's kind of a walk. So that's not the most convenient thing they've done. I wish if they were gonna do that an all day locker, you could use it like at each different ride. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that also includes like fanny packs and stuff like that. They're not gonna let you bring on the rides. Yeah, uh, and they are pretty strict about it. They were. So that lock, all day locker, if you're bringing just a sweatshirt or a couple things that I keep with you, could be an okay deal that you're gonna go back later in the evening when it gets cooler out to put on a sweatshirt. That'd be okay. But if you're bringing a backpack like we do. It was a struggle. <laughs> so talking about backpacks, what do we usually have in our backpacks? everything <laughs> we had well it was december so we had sweatshirts we had water bottle uh we had i think i even brought like a little knit cap in case i got cold <laughs> i think you also had gloves possibly because it gets really cold in mission bay you're right on that bay and that breeze kicks up uh so yeah but, us southern californians were a little spoiled like that we were not we're like fair weather people <laughs> so yeah a lot of people I uh, like to bring in snacks and different things to eat and snack through the day, maybe save a few dollars. You can't do that here. Yeah, so there's no outside food. If you have like a medical need or if you have formula, you have to go talk to guest services and they'll help you out with that. Yeah, so the only thing you bring in is a, either a refillable water bottle or just a water bottle. Yeah, so it kind of adds up quickly, but you know, I always like to, if we buy stuff, have something to put, you know, like a little souvenirs and stuff in. But if you got too many backpacks, like if you had a group of five and all five of you guys brought backpacks, that could add up by the end of the day, four or five, whatever you have in your group. Okay, so let's go on to some of our other surprises that we found out while we were there. Okay, so like we said, we would pre-bought the Black Friday bundle sale. Of course, everything's subject to change. We knew that Shipwreck Rapids was gonna be closed. It was December, I didn't care. Um, yeah, I actually thought, okay, I'm not gonna get that wet. Again, why she brought a hat and gloves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the surprising thing was we got there th that morning and electric eel was down. Things happen, we understand, but now you've got one water ride, Journey to Atlantis, which people were getting really wet on, and Manta. So really we were down to 50% of the rides for $14.99. Yeah, and we actually were talking about going to Journey Atlantis until we talked to a couple that were from San Diego that go there all the time. This goes, I wouldn't go on unless you want to get really soaking wet. And everybody we saw, like we kept trying to like see if there was rose or something that might be better. No. Yeah. So, Good summer ride. <laughs> yeah, so what does the conclusion with that mean? For us that day, it wasn't worth it. I don't think it'd be worth it during the winter, like cold winters when it's two water rides and two roller coasters, unless you really were wanting to go on it and the lines were really long. Yeah. I don't know. And so, yeah, that's kind of what we had for rides. It wasn't very exciting. Yeah, so we went twice on Manta, so it was like $7 and change I, actually, per... Actually, Kim went twice on Manta. I stayed once, I only went once. Okay, so that's an interesting thing about Manta. I liked it. I thought it was such a cool ride and I love the beginning with all the screens around. Mm -hmm. But when they put you in, they really put those lap bars down. Now, of course, I understand I got a little fluff, uh, but they really pack down. And as you're riding, that bar goes down, down, down. And it's by the time I get off, I was like, Ooh, can't breathe. Yep. So I and mean, that's what you said too, I think. Yeah, it really did sque start squeezing you more and more. Yeah, it's one thing to be tight. It's another one by the end of the ride, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't breathe. Um, so that was a little, I mean, yeah, that's my, my thing and I take ownership of that one. Okay, so we were also talking about there was another thing available that could be helpful. And we're talking about what could help you during animal presentations. These, I was really impressed. I loved each one that we went to. Yeah, we really enjoyed ourselves. We had a great time. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we started off with the or Orca show. The Orca encounter, yeah, yes. we did. And that was just, that was awesome. Then we ended up doing Dolphin Days. Um, I thought that was really cool. They had 16 dolphins once, like doing certain things together, like synchronized jumps, yeah. all 16 of them. And I was like, wow, how did they, I was blown away. Tip on that uh, encounter is, if you sit towards the back, there's an actual back exit that's a little bit easier that drops you right off by the sharks. So the exhibit, the shark encounter, which is, I like 
shark and camera. Yeah. There's also Sea Lion Live. But we saw the Christmas version because we were there for the Christmas celebration. And that was a blast. That one actually was a lot of fun. I think that might have been <laughs> my favorite animal encounter that they had. I thought it was cool. That one, because of the Christmas, they had a lot of fun uh, humor to it and they made it into a skit. It was like an interactive animal show. Uh, it was more of like, I don't know, like a sitcom, like yeah. in the middle of it, like instead of learning is, but they put some education in it, but the way they did it was phenomenal. And even the entertainers on the way out were reacting with the crowd and everything and us. And she had to give me a hard time about my LA hat. And something about San Diego not liking LA. I don't know what it is. Don't know. <laughs> but it was, well, extremely a lot of fun. And then they also did have another show that was only meant for the, the time we were there, which was Christmas. And it was kind of a Cirque, would you put it? They call it Santa Circus Show, and I'm blown away. I really love like Circus Soleil shows, things like that. Uh, I, I've seen most of them. I really thought that they did outstanding for a theme park. I think that's the best way to put it. I was just like, wow, <laughs> that that's was incredible. I wasn't expecting that at a theme park. Yeah, it was, we had a great time. It was the last show we went to of the night. Uh, the thing is, is that what we noticed throughout the day is when we were at the orchid counter, it wasn't very crowded. No, we went to one of the first shows of the day though. Yeah, it wasn't very crowded. Another tip is there's signs on those benches as you go up says wet zone. You will <laughs> get wet in those zones if you're sitting there. <laughs> It might not be like universal where you're towards the back and you might be okay. No, here, you're gonna get wet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that might be refreshing on a good summer day, but or spring day, but if it's winter like it was, I wouldn't want to do that. So this leads into our tips is that plan out your shows throughout the day of where you're gonna go, what times you wanna go, because unfortunately what we saw a lot of people are like, oh no, we can't go see the orca counter or this. That's where they had choices because they didn't plan out those show times throughout the day. Right, with the limited mouse shows, they start later, like noonish into the late afternoon. And then sometimes they have two at a time, two shows. So if you don't pick the right ones in the right order, you may not get to see them. Plus you gotta arrive early because they do fill up. So you don't wanna be trying to get a seat 10 minutes before the show starts, unless you have the reserved seating, which that's why we say that could really help plan your day. I honestly, think it would have been really great option. It would have been nice to been able to just show up and have that reserved seating. It was just close, closer to the front or closer to the front. And so you had more of the center area. But so that's something to be aware of. If you really want those shows, if you don't want to wait there forever for seating and you just want to show up, maybe that's the way to do it. Okay, so next is dining. Like we said, we did the all day dining. So the restaurants that participate in that are Explorers Cafe, Shipwreck Reef Cafe, Calypso Bay Smokehouse, and Mama Stella's Pizza Kitchen. Wow, those are all really long names <laughs> for restaurants. Okay, you can always buy the all day dining at the cash register there if they still have them available. You're not gonna get the online discount price. You're gonna get the day of if it's available still. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they did run out of it. Okay, SeaWorld <laughs> Dining. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's theme park food, but it's really theme park food. Does that make sense? Okay, so a lot of times we end up trying something and we'd be like, it's really bad like really really bad that we'd have like a bite and that's it and then like we'd have our snack or appetizer and our soda and then we end up a few hours later going back and trying another place and it, it the waits were really long 45 minutes to an hour especially uh calypso's bay smokehouse unless you get there early that one really backs up yes and really you can go get food every 60 minutes, food, appetizer, like we explained earlier. Uh, we ended up wishing we never got it. The food was pretty bad. Um, there was another place that was, I think it was kind of a temporary. I haven't been able to find it again, but it was an outdoor like pokey bowls and things like that. That looked really good, and but it wasn't part of the all day dining. So I was just like, oh no, I would have much rather had this. I think the best thing I had, let's put it this way, is a chicken Caesar salad. That was my favorite thing I had. And for theme park food, they need some help in the kitchen. I think that's just the best way to put it. It's really bad. It, I'm sorry, but SeaWorld's gotta get some new chefs. Yeah. Uh, they need to redo their dining. It's just barely edible. Yeah, I think the best thing I had, and it, I put it this way, it's just okay, was the brisket. 
yeah, my ribs weren't good at all. Yeah, so something to be aware of if you want something more or maybe better eating, maybe skip the dining plan and go for something. If you're looking for quantity and just want to be able to get sodas and drinks and everything, not pay, you know, it may be worth it for that. But truthfully, I thought we might use it for the sodas to go and refill all day, but the lines were so long that we would have wasted our time trying to get sodas. Yeah. Like it wouldn't, it not worth it if you're like, oh, you know, maybe I just want a salad and a soda like midday for a snack or a dessert or something. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. You are going to wait in line for a long time. And then even at the beginning, and this should have been clue one, at guest services, we went to go pick up our wristband. There's a huge sign of there's long waits. Please be patient with us. <laughs> should have been like, oh, this is not going to go well. Yeah. So, what do we wish we would have done instead of doing the dining plan? Well, really, they have special things going around the park, and one of them was dining with the orcas. This looked incredible. So, dining with the orcas is $39 per adult and $29.99 per child. It's an hour-long dining experience. It is buffet, but they're supposed to have things like salmon, seafood. I don't know if that's kind of weird, but anyways, <laughs> <laughs> eating seafood from it, you know, the orcas. I don't know. But anyways, it's a, they also have a behind the scenes like animal specialist that talks or comes around and talks to you. You get up close time against a tank with some orcas and just that alone, I think if I was gonna eat, like I'd wanna make it the experience. Cause it's really comparison all day versus the one meal. I might wanna do the one meal in the park and had breakfast at home and or back at our campsite or had dinner back at the campsite too. Cause the hours were low like we're pretty short that day. It wasn't open very late. So yeah, that's what we wish we had done. And there's other things you can add on. You're gonna start seeing this theme a lot more. So there are behind the scene tours, upgrades. They can range anywhere from $20 to $200, depending on what you want. What was $20? It was the Flamingo. Oh, okay, so sorry. I, I, I It wasn't one of those that stuck in my head. So you can do these upgrades. Well, there's a couple of them, that, you know, they're notable ones, one. This is a dolphin, dolphin interaction, which is $169. Yeah, I mean, that's where you're getting in the water with the dolphins. I mean, I, cool. I think a lot of people have been like, that's kind of something I want to do. There's the beluga whale encounter, which is $89. The sea lion encounter, which is $49.99. Okay, both of those you do not get in the water with the animals. Those yeah. are just like from the side or so it's their dry experiences. And then there's a 10 minute dolphin encounter, which is $70. Okay, that's ouch. Um, <laughs> at that point, I think I'd want to go up to the interaction. I don't know, maybe I don't, but we saw a group doing the sloth encounter and that was $79 and it was 15 to 20 minutes, but they got some up close like time with the sloth. sloth and some really cool pictures, opportunities and everything else with that. Uh, and then you also have the Bluga interaction, which is $199. It's one hour experience, but 20 minutes only with the Bluga. But you're in the water. That actually might be a good idea because they keep cold water is on a hot summer day. <laughs> <laughs> and that blue air, that, that area is actually a pretty co cool place to be cool in. <laughs> yeah, I really like that whole exhibit they have for the beluga whales. So yeah. I would, I don't know, that would be like a bucket list item of mine. And of course they are seasonal, like we were talking about there during Christmas time. There are different seasonal holidays than different what did you put it celebrations Festiv festivals and things they do throughout the year so i would really check out the website to see what is going on like right now where we're filming this mardi gras is going on just on the weekends but for the christmas celebration they had the santa circus show which we sh will show you footage of the they had a snowfall at jingle bell square we missed that one because it's i kind of feel like that's a lot like other theme parks do that wasn't unique per se mm -hmm. They had that tunnel that was full of lights, and they actually had this for Mardi Gras too, that they do different themes that you walk down, and it's really cool seeing. And they play it to music, so that's always kind of fun. Um, and they, yeah, they really got a lot of different things going on. They also do a Hanukkah celebration, um, lighting in the menorah every night during Hanukkah, so that's kind of nice that they do um, multicultural yeah. experiences. Yeah, so again, check the website and see what's kind of going on. It'll give you an idea, update to the things going on at SeaWorld. Um, I will say we had heard incredible things about the Halloween um, event. We did not go this year, but that is something I want to do in the future. <laughs> so. Or I think we've talked about it, like, but I'm more of the Halloween person now that do us. 
So what else is there to do? Well, there's a lot of different things to do there. There's a lot of different encounters that you can walk through. There's a lot of... It's bits. like aquariums, animal viewings, things like that. There, I love those. There's a couple areas where you can pet the stingrays. Tide pools. Yep, and then also the, like the little petting area of the sharks right up front there. And that was, that's really cool. What do we think overall of SeaWorld? Well, it, it's complicated. I think that's the best <laughs> way to put it. Uh, we love all the aquatic animals and all those experiences and the, sh the animal presentations. Like we said, we love the Santa Circus show. That was phenomenal. We really, really like those experiences. Yeah. But... <laughs> Uh, the coasters, the roller coasters, but only one being open and the other one being a wet water ride was very disappointing to us. We knew going in there was going to be a couple things closed. We just then accounted for both of those closed. Uh, again, during summer, might be better to go ahead and use the special front passes with the seating and everything like that. We really felt like we wasted money doing that. Yeah, it, it's kind of one of those things. I think you go for the animals and the aquatic and maybe throw in a few uh, roller coasters, you know, rides if you want or cool off on the ride. But if you're there for that is your main attraction, you may be disappointed. Um, also, there's extras. They just keep adding up. Yeah, uh, I felt more so than any other theme park we've ever been to, yeah, it they, felt nickel and dimed. Yeah, they felt like they're picking our pocket more than the mouse was. Okay, and we understand that Disneyland, Universal, some of those, they have the either Genie Plus, uh, Front of the Line, all that stuff, uh, Express Passes, whatever, whatever, theme park. So that's not so unreasonable. I mean, actually, it's a pretty good price for that. Um, but there's only four rides compared to a whole theme park. So maybe not. I don't know. Then you get to, like, the behind-the-scene tours. And those are all up charges and you see people having a great time, but you're like, oh, do I want to really pay this much more? Do I want to pay that much more? Mm. Yeah, it just felt really <laughs> everything like that. Disappointment with the lockers. It, it really did that. And then we also had to ask ourselves, Kim and I just went alone. If Hayden would want to go here and spend a lot of time. I think at his age, being a teenager, he'd been like, okay, half day, he'd been good. That's about it. I think yeah. for, little, for little ones, I think this would be an awesome place. I remember taking Hayden's, like I said, we went there 10 years ago with Hayden. He was just little and he loved it. That's where he found his love of ham, hammerhead sharks. The extras like the Bay Ride Skyline you would think would be included. So the Bayside Sky Ride is $6 and it's for a round trip ride. And of course you're like, wait a minute, but it's a roller coaster. You're in a theme park. Like I know Magic Mountain does a little bit of that too. But when you're doing that with this experience and this tour and the the lockers and the this and that, and it's just like, okay, everywhere I hear is you just want more, more, more money. Um, that's what I hear at SeaWorld. They have a sky tower that goes straight up, supposed to have very beautiful views of San Diego and the beaches and everything. But once again, that's $6 per person. Family of four, $24 yeah. on top of what you've paid. So... Yeah, I really, I think if you're going there with the little ones, it's great. I think for teenagers or you're trying to do a whole bunch of different things, it may be feeling like you're nickel and dime to death. And of course with teenagers, the first thing they're like, ooh, that looks cool. I want to go do that. Oh, they're in the water with the dolphins. Ooh, I want to do that. Because you're seeing all these tours that you, that you can upgrade to. So of course, you know, kids are going, oh, that looks fantastic. But they don't realize it costs more. Here's another huge tip is if you want to go see the blue whales, go see them at night. Okay, that was incredible because at night with their kind of the white uh, skin, whatnot, it's all, it kind of like glows. It's yeah. really cool. It will show you video. With the black light, yeah, it's really cool. Okay, so really, yeah, it's only really a one day park. Agreed. Uh, get there early, plan out your shows, plan out your rides. If it's busy, think about the add ons. I would think like during spring break or summertime, you may want to look at those. So I don't know if we can recommend the Quick Q Unlimited. I really am on the fence on that. And I think it's a little bit because when we went, it wasn't that busy and you could do them easily. Yeah, we literally could walk on. And I think the longest wait we saw was maybe 20 minutes. So yeah, it, it just all depends. Yeah. But like I said, if I were going to do something like that, I wouldn't want to add on the 
reserve seating with it. Absolutely. Okay, so one last tip is it is SeaWorld. It's kind of funny how it goes to both extremes because at night it can get really cold even during summer because that marine oh, yes. layer. Um, you're right on the ocean and it's kind of unexpected once in a while if you're not used to it. But during the day, it can get really, really hot, especially when you're going to those animal presentations, sitting on the concrete bleacher out in the middle of the blazing sun. So maybe you do want those soak areas. I don't know, but uh, just that's one of the things where you're gonna drink a lot of water, tons of sunscreen. Even, I think there was like two hours, we kind of felt it a little bit when we were sitting there watching the Dolphins Days. Yeah, Show. so it can get warm, cold, it is on the coast, so be very aware of what the weather and what the weather is going to be. At the end of the night, they have sweatshirts and blankets out at the end of the night because people are getting cold, and even on summers. Yeah, we actually did that the first time we went a few years ago with our son that we ended up buying him a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I would say SeaWorld is a definite one-day park if you're over in San Diego. Enjoy the time. Uh, I would not try to go back multiple days. No, absolutely not. Um, even this is, I think you and I have talked about this a little bit. We are disappointed we didn't get to go on the roller coasters. Things happen, we understand. That's out of our control. We would have liked to try those. But also at the same point, I don't know if I have to go like every year or frequently or anything like mm -hmm. that. Um, unless I was doing something like the add-ons, but then once again, that would add up quite quickly. Yeah. And really, we do go to the camping in San Diego quite a bit. We're literally looking across the bay at SeaWorld. And I really don't feel the need to go over there now. No. Um, I, you know what? I still I love theme parks, so I struggle with it when I'm looking at it straight on. But if I wasn't looking at it straight on all the time when we were camping, then I'd be like, eh, you know, maybe I don't need to go quite as often and like i said i'd really like to we might go for the halloween like i said because that's just a whole different event it'd be like going to a whole nother theme park but it's not something i'm like oh we have to go back to i really want to go and they like we said the they need to up their dining game yeah absolutely so please like subscribe and follow along our hana and let us know down below in the comments below what do you think of sea world san diego have you been there is it kind of one of those things on your bucket list let us know so with that, I think it's time for us to say goodbye and find, find your, your magic. magic. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone.